All right, so that that's the um, graduation video. Like I said, it'll be posted on the church website. So we're living in like unprecedented times. We're we're outside doing our graduation service. This is the only class I hope ever has to go through what this graduating class has went through, missing out on basically everything. They, you know, they were out of school on March 13th, and they've been out since then, and they've missed graduations. I mean, they've had it different. It's, it's just not been good for them, in, in my opinion. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you all think differently, but for me, I just feel like they missed out on a lot. So, we're still going to do a graduation service. Wendy is going to be up here. I'm going to lose my son. Watch this. Can't even hold on to it. So, I'm going to just go ahead and announce the graduates. i got a couple of them up here. There's five. If there's any other graduates out there that just came in, if you can come up here. Um, but in no particular order, um, I'm just going to name them all. i got them right down here. So, we got Kayla McDermott, um, Seth Eaton, Travis Myers, Tennessee Michael, Adriana Haynes, Ben Lambert, Colton Kyle, Jacob Thompson, Angela Faga, and Easton Harner. I want these guys to come on up here. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Every graduate, here's what we're going to do. we got 10 graduates. You all get up front here. Come on. Come on. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. They're all in cars. They can't. You can't see them. Don't be scared. So here's what we're going to do. we got 10 graduates. I want to do this a little different. 10 honks. All right, just 10 quick honks. All right, give them to me. Come on. That's one for each graduate. Love these guys. We presented them with some gifts. Um, I kind of just brought them in there just now and uh, just kind of gave them a quick word of wisdom. I, I haven't got to meet with my team since, since March. And that stresses me out because I feel like they, they, they need the word. They need the togetherness, you know. They, they need that um, that collective group. That's what we're here. That's what the church is, a collective body. And we've missed out on that. So I just pray that we've equipped them uh, for what they need. All right, guys. If you all want to go back to your car, um, you all are good. Thank you all. Love you all. One more hop. There we go. Since that's the best we can do, that's what we've got to do, right? So, here's where I'm at today, right here. If y'all can't see this, this is one of my baby's bottles, right? This is what baby Annalie drinks out of. She's still drinking out of this. She's almost two. I've been trying to break her this thing. She will not break of this bottle. She will not get off this bottle. And we've tried, we've tried, and we've tried, we tried sippy cups. She's just different than my other kids, right? We're all different. So, oh gracious, it's all going to fly away. So, I'm still watching her grow. She's still growing, so she's still drinking the milk that comes out of this bottle. And she's still growing. And I think we're all like that. We're, we're all, some of us start on this bottle and we drink it for longer than others. And some of us get weaned off of it quicker than others. Um... So if, you're, if you have your Bible, whether it be like paper, electronic, whatever it may be, if you open your Bible, I'm going to read from Hebrews chapter 5, starting with verse 11. I'm going to read through, uh, through chapter 11, or through um, chapter 5, and a little bit of chapter 6. So, so just bear with me. I'm going to try to read this without it blowing away. Um, I'm reading from the NIV version because I really like the way this put it. So, start with verse 11, chapter 5. We have much to say about this. But it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though, by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Now moving over to chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Therefore let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And 
God permitting, we will do so. So there's a lot that can be said about chapter the first four chapters of Hebrews, right? So the first four chapters in Hebrews, if you get a chance to read through that, it really talks about Jesus. It sets Jesus up on a pedestal. Um, the writer of Hebrews, which I think is Paul, it's, it's up in question, who, who wrote Hebrews? Um, but the writer of Hebrews writes a lot about Jesus and how he's, he's really up on a pedestal. He's way above the angels. He's, he's up there with God. He's God's son. But then he gets into chapter 5 and he basically and he starts condemning the church. So here we are on what we're going to call this graduation Sunday and we're about to send these graduates off into the real world. Um, most of their lives, many of them have been given instruction in church, um, by parents, whatever. They think we've been given them instruction. We've taught them. Some of them have been my youth group for three years now. And we've tried to lay them a foundation to stand on, that foundation of Jesus Christ. But are they ready? Are any of us ready to go out into this world? Sometimes I don't want to go out there. I see this evil world we live in and I don't like it. But we have to go hit it full force, right? We have to run into it and take it on because we can't just well, unless Corona's going on, we can't just sit down in our house and not go anywhere. But, but eventually we're all going to have to go back out and face the real world um, through the quarantine, after the quarantine. So this condemnation of the church, what the writer is saying, is you know what you've been taught. You've been given these fundamentals. But by this time, since you have these fundamentals, you need to be out teaching God's Word. You should be out teaching God's Word. You've got the foundation. Now it's time for you to be a teacher. It says you ought to be teachers. But instead, you still need someone to teach you the elementary truths. So I was thinking about this. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Right? So that's one of the first scriptures I learned and I memorized when I was, you know, yay big. And I think for a lot of it, it probably is. It probably is. If it was, give me a honk. So, so one of the first scriptures I learned, and it's elementary because we learn it when we're so young. Just like my baby Annalie that's still on this bottle, and I'm trying to teach her these scriptures, and I'm trying to teach her these words. She's young, and that's an elementary truth. But the writer is saying here, you already know John 3.16 say, preacher, I know John 3.16. I know Matthew chapter 28, the Great Commission. Right? You're saying, I know I know Acts 2.38 says I need to be baptized. Right? Here at this church, we want, to, we want you to be baptized if you haven't been. So, you're saying, I know these Scriptures. I know this foundation. And we've been coming here every Sunday since March. We started up there on the hill and then we've been over here for a while. We were over there by the flagpole. We've been out here and we've been getting, you know, 30 minutes of church service since March. And you're saying, I know these fundamental truths. What do I do now? You have to go out and be a teacher. God wants you to be a teacher. He wants you to go teach others this Word. He wants you to go out and show people through your life, through your actions. He wants you to show His Word. So the milk that we're drinking can't stop here at church, right? We can't just drink the Sunday morning milk. You know, we can't just have the Sunday morning drink that we want to drink, the 30-minute church service, and be done. And go out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and think that we don't need God's Word because we need God's Word today, tomorrow, and the next day, and not just for 30 minutes on Sunday. So I want the church here, Hope Christian Church and this church family to be out teaching the Word. And I know God does too. And these young people, I pray that we've given them a foundation to go out and teach this Word, whether it be college or trade school, wherever they plan on going, whether they stay here in Hampshire County, because as, I say, as country as we are here in Hampshire County, as church as we are, there are still people here who need God's Word 
just as much as they do in New York City or Chicago or Atlanta or anywhere else in this country, there are still those people. So you know, before, before March, we were getting two hours a week or so of church, and I was teaching my youth, and they were coming to youth group, and they were getting that fundamental stuff in God's Word. But here in a few weeks, you know, they may be going out to college, they may be going off to wherever it may be, and they may not be coming back to this church for this 30-minute service. They may not be coming back here. I mean, if you all may not come back next week, you may miss a week, you may be on vacation, whatever it may be. But I was, I was just kind of thinking this week, where, where are we at the rest of the time during the week? And, and I kind of looked it up. There's like 112 waking hours in a week because we sleep for about eight hours. So when you add it up, it's about 112 hours a week that you're awake. So for 112 hours a week, are we out teaching God's Word? Are we living out Christ in our lives? I sure hope we are, because that's what His Word is calling us to do. You know, I was thinking about that, and I was like, man, during the waking hours, am I out teaching God's Word? Am I doing what I'm telling you all to do? And I got to thinking about sleeping. I don't know how many of y'all have had spiritual attacks while you're sleeping, but I sure have. So we're fighting the battle against the world whether we're awake or whether we're asleep. We're fighting a battle that we've got to use God's Word as the authority to overcome those battles. So, to feast on the deeper knowledge of God. I, I was really thinking about that. And I kind of th started thinking about like Golden Corral. Like a God buffet. Right? How do we feast on the big buffet of God and quit drinking from this? I was thinking about Annalie. You know, she, she does not like steak, and I love steak. Right? I like a burger. I want to feast on God's Word. And as much as I need John 3.16, I need Romans 8.28. Now, I've got to dig deeper. I've got to dig deeper to understand God's Word. To really try to understand God. We're never going to be able to understand Him, but we can get closer to God. We can dig deeper. I was just telling those teams that I brought in there, as much, as many battles as you go through, whatever you face in this life, you will find relevance in this Word if you dig deep enough. You will find a battle that someone faced that is like what you're going through. And I, I told them, more than likely it was Jesus Christ. Because he went through the battles we're facing. It may not be like bullying we go through. Or it may not be the loss of a loved one like, like we go through. It may not be um, a broken relationship like we go through. But it's going to be relevant. You're going to find relevance in God's Word if you dig for it. Not just listen for 30 minutes a week and not just come to church service. You've got to do the digging. In chapter 6, we're given that charge to move forward past elementary truths and on to maturity. So since we know the basic teachings of Jesus, we know about Jesus, we know about the resurrection, we know about eternal life, we know those things. Um, we're called to move into maturity if we've been in church for a time. If we feasted on this for a while, if we've had this bottle for just a short time, we're now called into maturity in Jesus. We're called to become more mature, move past those basics. We're called to learn the gifts of the Spirit. Do you know your spiritual gifts? Have you, have you tried to figure out what your spiritual gifts are? Because I assure you, if you are a born-again believer, you have spiritual gifts. Are, are you using those gifts for the church? Do you know the power of prayer? Do you know the power when you hit your knees and you cry out to God, do you know the power of prayer? That's spiritual maturity. Do you know how to put on the full armor of God? That armor that He calls us to put on, that suit of armor that He gives us, all the pieces of. That spiritual maturity. That's, that's what I want you to have today. I want you to move forward to maturity. I want you to start teaching this Word to others. I want you to stop feasting on this bottle and start feasting on that buffet of God. Start eating solid food. That's what I want from my baby girl. And that's what God wants from us. He, 
He wants us to move on to maturity. So, don't go at it blindly. Don't think that just because you're coming here for 30 minutes, that you can go out and start teaching God's Word. You have to dig deeper into His Word. You have to have that personal relationship with Jesus. You know, your good works aren't going to get you to heaven. Your relationship with Jesus Christ is. And it has to be a relationship that's true because He knows your inner thoughts. He knows your inner person. He knows each and every one of us by name and He calls us by name. And He wants us to dig deep into His Word, feast on His love for us, and then go out and teach others. Go out and teach this world. Go out to L&M and when you see someone, say, hey, how's your relationship with Jesus? Hey, let me tell you what happened to me this week. Let me show you what God did for me in my life. When you go in the food line and the cashier looks down and they've got a mask on and they're so worried about Corona, share the Word of God with them. Share something good with them. Start teaching others what God's done in your life. Even if you don't think it's something big and grand, there's little things God has has given you will be a teaching moment for someone else. You graduates, as you go out and you take on this world, seek wisdom through the Word of God and through wise people, much older people. Don't seek wisdom from your peers because two 18, 19 year olds don't make a 38 year old or 30 whatever and a 36 year old. Okay? It doesn't work like that. Seek wisdom from those who are more knowledgeable. Seek wisdom from the Word of God. This word here is like, well, depending on what you say, whenever King James 1600s, it was written 2,000 years ago, this word. You know, it's been written over the course of millennia. This word is where you seek wisdom. That's what I have for you today. I want to live